Hi. Well, I'm Nigel Grizzard, and as you can tell by my accent, I'm not from Bradford, but I'm from London. I came north to Bradford in 1976 from London, and I came to work for Bradford Council. And one of the things that I've been doing in London was taking tours of Jewish history. I took tours many, many years ago of the Jewish East End of London, and we used to go to Spitalfields and see where the Great Synagogue was. And I'm very pleased today to start the tour in Bradford's magnificent Cartwright Hall. And here in Cartwright Hall, we have this special exhibition which, goes, which lasts until July, in William Rothenstein's work. William Rothenstein was a painter who grew up in Bradford and who went to London. And why we're here is because he painted these wonderful pictures which are of the synagogue in Spitalfields and Jews of Prayer. And I like to start here because all my tour is about links, is stories of people linking with each other. And this is the first one. We've got a special exhibition about William Rothenstein, lots of pictures, but in 1908, he, took, he, he made all these pictures of Jews at prayer in Spitalfields. And it's interesting because about that time in 1908, my great-grandfather and my grandfather were most probably living in Spitalfields. I know they were living there in 1898. I think they were still there in 1908. So there's a direct link. So we'll start here. And this is the start of the Bradford Jewish journey. It's to start to tell people about the, the Victorian merchants who came to Bradford in the 19th century to build up the city to make it the wall capital of the world. And this is the story that I'll tell you about as we go along today. So this is Anne Frank's tree, which was planted earlier this year, 2015, by the Lord Mayor of Bradford, Councillor Mike Gibbons, and Dr. Ava Schloss, MBE, who's Anne, who was Anne Frank's, or is Anne Frank's, half-sister. And I always bring people here because I think the tree is very important because it talks about tolerance. And Bradford has always been a tolerant place. It's been a home for a lot of people. It was a home for a lot of Jewish refugees who came who found refuge in the city in the period 1933 to 1945 and afterwards fleeing from the Nazis. And it's been a home for people before then and after then up till today. The people always come to Bradford to find sanctuary here. Jews in Bradford had a have been in, had a tremendous link, especially in the civic sphere. And there have been one mayor and three Jewish Lord Mayors of Bradford. The first mayor was a man called Charles Seaman back in 1863. Then there was Jacob Moser, who was the first Jewish Lord Mayor in 1910 and 1911. Then there was Alderman Dr. David Black. And finally, Olive Messer. I knew Olive Messer. She was born in Leeds. She came to Bradford. Her husband was a doctor, Dr. Basil Messer, off. Barker End Road, and this tree was planted by her in February 1985, in the 30 years it's grown, and it was planted at the same time, it says, in the Jewish year of 5745. We're standing in Mount Roy, which is a beautiful oasis. It's a gem of a street, we're actually just off Manningham Lane, but you wouldn't think it. We can hear the traffic, but we're in an oasis of peace. And a lot of the Jews who came to Bradford in the 19th century lived in the streets around Cartwright Hall and Lister Park. And the, here in Mount Royd at number four lived a man called Humbert Wolfe. He was a poet and a writer. One of his famous poems was called The Soldier, which is performed at many which is read at many Remembrance Day events. And we like to bring people down here just to give them a feel of that Victorian middle-class Bradford that existed. So we're now, as I said, we're in Mount Roy and we're next going to be walking and I will show you the home of Jacob Moser and I will tell you who Moser was and how it all links together. This is Eight Oak Villas, which was the home of Jacob Moser. Moser was born in Schleswig-Holstein. He was a textile merchant. He was in partnership with a man called Victor Edelstein. And from 1870 to 1920s, he was very, very involved in life in Bradford. He was involved in giving lots of money to charity. He gave money for an old age, for an old people's charity fund in Bradford. He gave to all sorts of causes. The other interesting thing about Moser was that he funded the first Hebrew high school in the city of Tel Aviv, called the Herzliya Gymnasia. And if you go to Tel Aviv today, you'll find in the high school a bust of Jacob Moser. The other interesting thing about Moser is he's the only man who has a street named after him, both in Bradford, there is a Moser Street, 
and in Tel Aviv where there's a Moses Street as well. In the 1980s a friend came to me and asked what were Jewish prayer boxes and I said what do you mean? He said well there's this hotel called the Carlton Hotel which we're standing behind which is behind me which had Jewish prayer boxes on the doors and I realized that he was talking about a thing called a mezuzah which is inside a Jewish home we have a little box on each door lintel on the top right hand side with a prayer inside and we asked people around why would this building have Jewish prayer boxes now it turns out that after Kristallnacht which was an attack against the Jews in 1938 Mr Oswald Stroud who I mentioned before said to the Bradford Jewish community they had to get moving and they had to do something to help Jewish refugees coming from Germany, Austria and Czechoslovakia. They purchased this building and there were 10,000 Jewish children on a program called the Kinder Transport were brought to Britain in 1938-1939 and 25 boys came to live at this building which is known at the hostel. I was very fortunate that in 1989 we worked with the BBC, we made a film, we brought as many of the boys as we could back for the 50th anniversary. If you go on YouTube and put the Hostel Bradford, you'll see all the boys talking about this hostel, about their lives, about where they came from, about what happened here and how they got on. And ever since then I've been involved. And in fact, one of the boys died about two months ago in Leeds and I spoke at his funeral and I talked about how he'd made one great journey in his life from Berlin to Bradford. <laughs> gardens and the building opposite which is the Al Munim primary school was the first orthodox purpose-built orthodox synagogue in Bradford it was opened in 1906 and it closed in 1970 when it closed it became a warehouse where they used to sell car radios and car stereos and you can still see some of the Hebrew letters if you look very closely there but I bring many people down here People tell me that they were married there. People tell me they had their bar mitzvah there. People tell me about celebrating the Jewish holidays there. I'm also always amazed that the street was always still cobbled. It was then, it is now, and I wonder how the cars that go down it, how their shock absorbers last. So we're at Two Elden Place where Jacob Honor lived. And I wrote about Jacob Honor in an obscure magazine many years ago. And a man wrote to me called Mr. Russell. And he said, my name now is Russell, but originally it's Honor and I was Jacob Honor's great-grandson. And more interesting, he had all the papers. He told me that Jacob Honor had been born in Hamburg, come to Manchester, then gone to Leeds, and when the railway came to Bradford in 1846, he moved to Bradford. He was the founder of the Chamber of Commerce. He laid the synagogue, foundation stone in Boland Street that we'll see shortly. And also he had an amazing 80th birthday party here, attended by all sorts of people. And I have a letter from one of his grandchildren describing the day. The other interesting thing is one of Jacob Honor's descendants was Dame Peggy Ashcroft, the famous actress. So there's lots about Jacob Honor and lots more we'll see when we go to the cinema. We're inside the Bradford Synagogue now, which is the oldest standing synagogue in Yorkshire. The foundation stone was laid. It's all been covered over now because there's been work on it by Mr. Jacob Honor in 1880 and the synagogue was opened in 1881 and there was a rabbi called Rabbi Strauss who came to Bradford in 1873. He served the community from 1873 to 1922 and the thing he did was to get them moving and to build the synagogue. We've uh, very fortunate to have had a grant from the Heritage Lottery and we've had one grant to do a project called Making Their Mark which I was involved in looking at the history of the Jewish community in Bradford and the next grant has been to do the building up and to give it regeneration and in fact it's the first time that it's I think had any real repairs mostly since it was built in 1881 so we're very interested to see what we find when we do the regeneration so you've seen many of the sites on the Bradford Jewish Heritage Trail the synagogue is a good place to finish because the synagogue is the hub of Jewish life in Bradford we're having it regenerated the lottery are paying for these repairs as I said and we hope that regeneration also sees a regeneration and a continuation of Jewish life in the city. Jews have been involved in Bradford from 1830 to the present, which is a time of about 185 years. A lot's been done in that time, and we hope for a happy future as well. <laughs>